So, Joe, a lot riding on this and some interesting allies both for and against this tax increase in California. It's always that way, isn't it? Strange bedfellows uh, just across the board with politics. Uh, you need a, I don't know. It's uh, what we're going to talk about right now. Yeah, strange bedfellows, right? We here. Do. You guys are like pals. We are. And, you know, we are. I'm glad we finally meet. Uh, well, it's very good have to, you guys have, never to have you in here. Never Not a, yeah, but we, you know, it, it's remote learning. World. It's a remote world, and you're few. You don't ever have to meet the anybody. Stuff works, uh, the virtual stuff does work, uh, but it's better to see you. It's great to see Carter you, Carter Meds, and for me, you're even better looking in person. Which is uh, that was the first shock to me, Congressman Ro Khanna of California's. They just moved all the way past. Which district? Since they. 17th, which includes parts of the Silicon Valley. I like the cut of your jib. How are you? It's good, <laughs> I'm doing good, well. good to have I'm doing you. Well. In. Um, the election's less than two weeks away. I think there's a lot of issues, but inflation is probably front and center. I don't know whether Democrats came to the party late to acknowledge that and, and focused on other things or not. What, what's your view on that? That's what that's what seems to be on voters' minds when. The, uh, they're polled. So you're right. It is on voters' minds. I think we should be talking more about the economy. We should have acknowledged inflation earlier, and then we should make a choice. Here's the choice. Democrats, we want to bring manufacturing back. We want to bring supply chains back. We want to put money in the pockets of working class. What are the Republicans running on, objectively? They're saying, let's extend the Trump tax cuts. Right. How did that work out in Britain? Wasn't that what Liz Truss tried? She almost bankrupted the British economy. How can they say they want to fight inflation when they're literally running on what Liz Truss just tried to do in Britain? We've had this discussion a lot uh, recently about whether the tax cuts were beneficial or not. And, you know, from my point of view, I think that the, the reason that the deficit is, is down so much is because of the rip-roaring receipts that the federal government has taken in as we've recovered uh, from the pandemic. And we were doing pretty well before the pandemic hit. Wages were growing. Income was growing. I want to get back to talking to you about something because we, we had a, a discussion earlier today with Halima Croft, who is at the Davos in the Desert um, uh, meeting up with, with the Saudis and, and other members, uh, obviously. You have said we, we should, I, I guess, penalize the Saudis for, the, for not cooperating with us on trying to keep oil prices down. And, and I, I understand your rationale, but listening to her. I'm not convinced they're doing it to try and hurt us. I think they're doing it in large part because of their own domestic concerns. And, 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 and if, we, if we were to stop giving them help uh, counter, uh, as a counter to Iran and their intentions in the Middle East, I think it could have unintended consequences. Do you think about those things, Ro? I do. First of all, I don't care what their motives are. I care what the impact they have on Americans. My job is to help make sure Americans are strong and aren't paying a lot at the pump. And I know what we give them. I mean, we give them more military technology than almost any other ally. We have so many joint defense uh, arrangements. We give them 70% of their arms. And they're making over 70% profits on each barrel of oil. Right. You know, you and I have gone after big oil. Big oil companies are saints compared to what the Saudis are doing. And then they're going to go make more money off of when we are one of their closest allies? No. You know, we can cut that sound by and just, <laughs> just have it exactly that what you just said that the big oil companies are saints and we might do that uh, too. that'd be like republican okay. advertising these now days. now <laughs> so I'm, I'm not trying to trap you but the reason it would you at least acknowledge that the rush uh to renewables globally and especially in europe embolden putin to be able to sort of hold that entire continent hostage and that, in large part, is why we have this, a lot of this inflation and a lot of the, uh, the issues that, uh, that, that we're dealing with right now can go back to that, to the, to the attack by the Biden administration on fossil fuels. I don't think that's the case in the United States. In Europe, yes. I mean, Germany they rushed it. But you, you, there was a time when you said we're not going, as fa we're not going fast enough. We're not, we're not matching Europe on cutting production. Well, we've gone a lot slower than Europe. So you, we have, but, but then you, you can't it, turn around and say, well, then we go too fast. Um, Germany we, should have. We haven't you, shut down nuclear plants. We haven't, you know. 
Well, Germany should have done nuclear. Uh, even Chancellor Schultz, when we met him with Speaker Pelosi, he acknowledged that, uh, and he's on the left, that Germany needs to have nuclear as part of its option. But in the United States, and look, you were right about the numbers, the highest, uh, when we had right. a past conversation, 2019 was the peak of oil production. We're not quite there yet. Uh, but by 2023, we're going to be at the highest production. So this idea that we're not producing is just not true. Should we not be doing business with Saudi Arabia at all? And, and then I just <clears throat> want to broaden that out to, to how we handle China from here. And, and do you think of the unintended consequences that if we were to cut relations with Saudi Arabia? I don't know what that would do to, to, to people that, that need energy around the world. If we were to, to uh, become less of a trading partner with China, the entire global economy would slow and it, it would hurt a lot of people. Do you, aren't there unintended consequences to being the mar moral arbiter of the world? Let's discuss both. On the Saudis, I'm not for cutting relations. I mean, you would maybe then have the rise of Wahhabism, which could be dangerous. I'm for keeping our troops there. All I've called for is saying, let's have a pause for one year on certain weapon sales. And by the way, if we put that out there, I think they'll reconsider because they're very dependent. On China, here's the point. They have, we've hollowed out our middle class, lost 5 million jobs to China. We've got a 330 billion trade deficit. It's totally unbalanced. I'm for rebalancing the production. They're overproducing and they don't have a consumer class that has any purchasing power. And we've hollowed out a lot of our jobs. So let's rebalance the trade. Uh, and that, that, that I think is reasonable. But you think it's the government's job to, to, to rebalance? Yes, because, the, first of all, China hasn't played by the rules. They've got state... You, you didn't like the tariffs, did you? I thought some of the strategic tariffs were fine. I, I thought Robert Lighthouser, under Trump, actually did uh, some things that I agreed with. That uh, he said that we can't just have all our industry and production leave. Here's what my view is. You know the last time, Joe, we've had a trade surplus in America? 1975. Right. We've lost our steel. We've lost aluminum. By the way, we used to make 37% of aluminum. It's all in China, and they're making it with dirty coal. I'd much rather we make it here. But they you want to raise corporate taxes. Well, I want corporate taxes to be higher than where President Trump cut, uh, cut them to. But How does that help us bring corporations back here? Because those corporations weren't building the new factories uh, in the United States. The CHIPS Act, what we did, bipartisan, that's putting Intel in Ohio. They're creating... Two new factories, $20 billion. Let's unite in this country to bring new manufacturing back, which we can do with productivity advantages, with technology, and start reducing and rebalancing trade deficits. That's something well, how do you that, do that... How do you balance the trade deficit? What, what rules would you put in place? Because you can't continue to spend like we did on the CHIPS Act for every sector. Well, I would have strategic government purchasing and government financing in key industries. I would have strategic tariffs. And I would use things like we did with the Plaza Accords with Japan and Germany, where, where we rebalance the currency. Because as long as we have as high a currency, the exports are higher. But the reason we have the high currency is because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates. And we're doing that to try and kill inflation. So well, that, how it's, do you put this all together? Well, it's hard right now. Obviously, right now, with the interest rates going up, it's going to be hard. But that's a momentary phenomenon. I mean, we're not going to have high interest rates for the next year. Uh, so once those interest rates, I mean, or eventually right. <laughs> those interest rates will go down. But the biggest thing is, I look, FDR, in my view, had the right policies, which was building industry with the private sector. China doesn't do that. They just have state-owned companies, state banks. I'm all for the private sector, but then in key industries around the countries, let's have the government help with financing and investment. What do you do about the coastal blue states that have very high taxes? Yeah. Um, and you're starting to see it. New York's struggling, California's struggling. Um, you're seeing businesses move out. We're talking about higher corporate taxes as, as one issue. Then there's the, the taxes uh, on individuals. The SALT tax uh, issue may or may not go away um, in a couple of years. How does this all play out? And what do you think has to happen in those blue states? Well, Andrew, I keep hearing the narrative of people moving out. You know, California just surpassed Germany as the fourth largest economy in the world. So obviously something we're doing is working. When you come to my district, now it's gone down maybe a little bit, but we had almost $10 trillion of market cap. Okay, good. And, and, and people are paying, paying, paying tax. So I, I think we need the SALT r reforms, but by and large, 
I think it's fine to tax people in my district so that we can create jobs in other parts of the country and give people a One job. thing I haven't heard from you, and we're going to blow through the top, but we're not going to go to break because you're here. Honest uh, to God. Yeah, right, I just, well, I I just got the word. That's how important yeah. you are. You're, you're, the, the profit margins in the oil and gas industry that, yeah. that you want to do the windfall on pale in comparison to the margins of all your constituent companies. Yeah. California. So uh, how, do, how do you square that, that circle? They, do you want to have windfall profits on tech companies because they make 90% profit margins? No, I wanted them to pay tax. I want Amazon and other companies to pay at least well, the why do it to the oil tax. company? Well, because the, if the, these windfall profits have been caused by the war. I mean, I, I, if, if Apple or Google benefited from some external event, then yes, but they're not benefiting. They've had profits because of technology and innovation. You know it goes both ways for those poor oil companies when they, you know, they had some lean years too. Do you rebate the windfall profits when they, you know, when they almost go out of business or do go out of business? Well, they have depreciation. They have a lot of tax incentives. But, you know, in, in Europe, Shell and other oil companies are saying, oh, we understand the pain of Europeans. We're fine paying a windfall profits tax in Europe. So why is it that they're fine paying it in Europe, but they're not fine paying it in the United States of America? I don't, you don't really think it's ever gonna, it's a bad idea, don't you think, Ro, seriously? I mean, they, they, to decide how much, for the government to decide what is a fair profit for a company, we, we just don't do that here. Well, but I think when people are making record profits and folks are paying, in my district, six bucks at the pump, in other places, 380, 4, 450, then having a tax and giving a rebate it makes sense. I wouldn't do it permanently. And does, it, does it make sense for a technology company to have a 90% gross margin? I mean, they're, they're making they're a lot of money too, they don't have the they're... same sort of capital structure that a lot of these other companies have. Right, but... Should you go after the profit margins? Well, I, I'm for a higher tax on, on billionaires and multimillionaires. I'm for a higher tax on corporations, but I'm not for taxing just uh, windfalls perpetually because it's not by some right. external event. If they were making money on a hurricane or a war, I think that's different. Yeah. But it, you don't, we don't, at the same time, we don't give oil companies money back when oil goes negative. We do, we, oil companies have, one of the things I've been pushing to repeal is all the fossil fuel subsidies. I mean, they get accelerated depreciation. They have tax credits for extraction right. that a lot of others don't. I have two questions real quick. One on wealth tax, because yeah. you talked about the wealth tax. I think about Evan Spiegel. Right. From Snap. Yeah, Snap, I know it. Okay. Yeah. This was a company that was worth $100 billion just, uh, you know, a couple months ago. Yeah. And is now worth $13 billion. Right. Depending on how a wealth tax would have been constructed, he would have paid, uh, and I, look, I know nobody, everyone's going to get their smallest violin for, for Evan Spiegel, but he would have paid enormous taxes, ostensibly, if there was some kind of wealth tax when the company was worth $100 billion, and then the company's lost, you know, you know, what, what 80, 80 percent of its value. No, so let's 90 percent. Let's do the math. Let's say there was a two percent wealth tax, 100 billion. He'd have paid two billion. Now it's 13 billion. So, OK, he would have been worth nine billion instead of. Uh, well, that was the market billion. cap. So his, his numbers are going to be lower. But yeah. But yeah. OK, I'm, I'm fine in that case of someone uh, being worth nine billion instead of 11 billion or 11 billion. Do you give a credit, billion. though, if, 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 if they lose all their, their wealth? What do we do with five? We, we can have some credit, but here's the basic thing. When you go to my district, and I welcome, we should do one of these squawk boxes from Silicon Valley. We'll do Valley. it. <laughs> squawk in the Valley. Oh, my God. Squawk, squawk in, squawk in the Valley. Valley. Anyway, are we going to, you know, Moderna and Pfizer, ripe for windfall profits. They, they benefit from this horrible, uh, you know, pandemic that came in. They're, well, look, I, and I, I've credited them for innovation, but what I would have said is they benefited because of NIH funding, and what I right. would say is not the windfall profit, but they should be making sure that that's being sold at a fair price, not just in the United States. We didn't talk about trading. We, we don't want to we talk about, about trade. We didn't talk yeah. about, I wouldn't trading. talk about antitrust, given yeah, all got, the big tech companies in California. From, from Silicon Valley, though, just the one point I'd make is you go and you talk to young people in my district, yeah. and they're positive, optimistic about America. They think the world's their oyster. Right. And the challenge, I think, in the country is how do we do this in other parts of the nation? And how do we get more people to have that shot? It's getting easier, right? right. Oracle, Oracle's now apparently looking for employees that don't live in your district, that live in other places where it's cheaper. They don't want them living here either. They want to pay less money. And I think to some extent that's great. There's talent in every zip code. There's talent well, I see a lot of young people are tweeting, and they need to watch this show a little bit more, too. I think they, there's a lot of wisdom still to be they had. Need to to <laughs> they need to listen to you, John. They need to listen to both of us. Part of middle America. That, that's right. <laughs> Congressman Connor, thank you.
Um, I think we definitely got to have a commercial eventually. We're, now we're, you know, we've cut our own taxes, or actually <laughs> raise our own taxes. Right.